Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, Geek Gods. How you doing? Um, so on this episode, it's me, your co your, one of your co-hosts, Jose, and the other one, Joey. Uh on this episode, we're gonna talk about Black Widow, spoilers, um, episode six of Loki, and what else are we gonna talk about? And Superman Lois, if we have the time. If we don't, it's fine. Uh wasn't a really big fan of this one ep uh this episode. For my sake. It, it was kinda like, you know. Yeah, I know, but I'm doing it for a video, goddammit, Tyler. It's good evening, good morning, good afternoon. It's it's a podcast. Whenever they listen to it, they listen to it. Um, and I'm also wearing two different earbuds. One is to listen for to Joey, and one is to listen, um, or oh, actually just to to hold my mic on TikTok because I'm live. But go on. So, uh, this episode we should start off with what? Black Widow? Let's start with Black Widow. Okay. <clears throat> and end it with Superman and Lois. Okay. So, go on. Tell us what happened with Black Widow there, Joey. Well, pretty much, we get a little bit of her past and her relationship with her family. Uh, you come to find out that they were sort of thrown into becoming Black Widows. Um which is like sort of a, a society of women uh, assa of assassins that is uh, being led by uh, pretty much the main villain of the film. Forgot his name. Ooh. But the, the whole premise, the whole th situation leads to the parents sort of kind of betraying them and sending them off to become assassins. Eventually, it, then it goes into the future of the of of their. Uh, it goes into the future of um, Natasha and Yelena, uh, her sister, and then it ends up, ends up with uh, showing that they're all brainwashed. Uh, you get to see a little moment, an event in Yelena's life when she's trying to kill one of the Black Widows and finding out that they're all brainwashed and there's a chemical that's able to sort of knock them out of their out of their uh, out of their uh, um, brainwashing or out of their Black Widow mo mode and whatever it is. Um, and then it leads to um natasha sort of running away from um uh thunderbolt uh thunderbolt lane uh what is his name uh, ross thunderbolt yeah uh ross thunderbolt who is on chasing everyone because this takes place after civil war when they right when black widow sort of betrays uh um the the pretty much the the uh the accords yeah uh so it takes place right after civil war and i think in the first shot we see also taskmaster um kind of i don't know i thought it was a robot at first um i was okay with whoever uh who the person was as taskmaster um i i just really thought it was a robot at the beginning because you put a chip in it because i they put yeah. the chip in it while he was, uh, or while they were watching the uh, recordings of the fight in the airport during Civil War, yeah. especially in, um, and that's really what it was. And then about after that, you know, uh, then she realizes that there's a package. She needs to go into hiding, especially like with, uh, they captured the other three. I think it was Falcon. It was Falcon, Ant Man, and what am I forgetting? Hawkeye. Um, and then they she meets her sister in Budapest, and they give us a brief moment of what happens in Budapest, but we never see the whole thing with Hawkeye and and Budapest and what happens with them, their whole fight. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. It kind of uh, tells it tells us that what have in that Avengers moment when he says. It's this is kind of like Budapest. He said, "You and I can remember Budapest. You and I remember Budapest very differently." So right. we get to see 
what happened in Budapest with uh, Hawkeye and um, and Natasha. Yeah, and then we get to see what happens um, with their whole family dynamic and how in the beginning also her backstory 1995? 98. Uh, because it, this is... I remember reading up on it and it said it's supposed to take place sort of in between when Captain Marvel first appears on Earth uh, again. And so it takes place during that timeline. Okay. I thought he was born in 1985 or 86. But yeah, it takes place in something. Um, I didn't see any... Well, they were in Ohio, so they were on just like they they didn't have any stores, so they have any they didn't drop any Easter eggs as much as I could remember. Um, there were a lot of moments where you were gonna see like especially the album, the photo album that they had. Oh, yeah, from the butterfly. Um, I think if you notice, there's a there's a sort of a. Uh... It takes back on touring during the 90s because right. they start giving us a rendition of Smells Like Teen Spirit, Nirvana, which yeah. was a hit around the early 90s. So mm. it was it was this rendition was pretty interesting. It also kind of get me teared up because I started thinking about like this is pretty much Natasha's end. You know, it's this is just a story that we're going to see about her. And this is like um it's like when a person is about to die, they sort of, uh, or there's a moment where it's, it's, they kind of sense their end. They try to rekindle with family in order to sort of, um, you know, so you could give us a, a kind of fill up that gap, but also they're going, you know, there's going to be a war coming, you know, and it feels like Marvel needed to give us this yeah. to sort of to give us a backstory on her life. I think um, they did a good job on that. Tyler, I'm going to unmute you when you stop being a little kid. Um, Brandon, yo, tell Joey I like his striped shirt hanged up. Let me cop it. Oh, no, that's a towel, actually. That's a towel. It looked like a shirt, honestly. It does, though. but it's a towel. I got that in um, New Jersey, an American Dream uh, water park. It's a long towel, too. I thought we were going to say American Girl. No. I used it as a blanket at some point. Okay. All right, let's get back to the story. Uh, <laughs> that was awkward. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Um, where was I going with this? So um, the sister yeah, man, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. what's her name? Yelena Bolova. Dude, blew my mind. I love. I, she I'm was love so hilarious in this movie. Yeah. She stole the show, by the way. She stole the show. Yeah, and I could did. like one hundred percent agree and back her up and be like, "You can be the next Black Widow." Like one hundred percent. Oh no, definitely. And I can see, like the way it ended, that we can probably see her sort of you know we'll get to that we'll get to that sort of uh end credit scene right. but right. yeah i loved uh, especially in that scene when she's like what is this you do with this pose this this pose when you like whip your hair back yeah 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 <laughs> it, it just was, it, i was, was cracking funny. up oh my gosh and they added it into the movie because they said that they were all making fun of um, Scarlett Johansson's pose when she does that. Uh -huh. So they were doing, she was doing that and they were saying that like, oh, they should add it into the movie. There were so many moments. Yeah, she did that during, um, during, did a lot of those types of poses. Especially when they were trying to get Red Guardian back from the uh, facility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. 
I love I, honestly, I love David Harbour's character. I love David Harbour. He did a great good Red Guardian. I I I don't know much about Red Guardian, but he gave this character life and I always liked them ever since he always played like the villain characters in some of the movies and always ended up dead somehow, you yeah. know, but you know, ever since stranger things, there was a side of him where it's like, he's a good guy and he could play this role. And then when he played red guardian, it was pretty interesting because it was like, we're getting a Soviet union super soldier. And this is the guy we're getting, you know, like I was cracking up in the scene when he's in prison. No, when he gets, when they get captured and he's trying to apologize to Natasha, but all this time it's not Natasha. Like he's getting pissed off. Like when he finds out and he's still trying to talk to her, but there's no earbud. So the whole situation, it's just so funny. Like he played a hell of a good role. Mm -hmm. I, I, so there was a, the theory goes that you know he fought Captain America in 1984, 85. And I was like, who is that? Like, which I uh, which Captain America was that? Was it um, Isaiah Bradley? Isaiah, Isaiah Bradley, yeah. Isaiah Bradley, or was it the other timeline when Steve Rogers went back? But the thing was like that was its own timeline, all universe type of type of thing. Yeah, but if you notice that he, when this guy ended up telling him that, yeah, he came out of an icicle. He was in, he was still in ice when such and such date, and then he breaks his arm and then he walks away. Right. You know, sort of like he's like lying about it, and but then he also asks Natasha about it. That if Captain, if Steve ever asked about him yeah yeah, which is kind of strange so there has to have been a moment that they actually have met yeah in a timeline you know which is funny i want to show you this wait i have like you know the comic book boxes and they usually have designs on it Mm -hmm. what's up adam baby and i have a captain america one adam doesn't Adam doesn't talk to us anymore. No He's too good for us, bro. Where is he? What the well, fuck? Stand by. I saw him here. He's a Red Guardian one. I could have sworn a Red Guardian was in here. You're losing it, man. Tell him he's yeah, losing it. No, I guess I don't see him. I thought Red Guardian was on this. Yeah. He was pretty much one of the major villains in, in I think in, in the in in Captain America's uh uh villain uh, all his villains that he has, he, he was one of them. Do you think he's a proper uh do you think hmm put on my question. You know what? I wanted to see also that if if Bucky was even being mentioned because there's that little plot hole that never been filled which when Natasha was um, fighting um, Bucky in Civil War and he says do you remember me? And then he kept beating the crap out of her. And she was like, well, I guess not. But we never got that, you know, that feel like, where did they know each other? And why would he remember her? Got her through the stomach area, didn't it? Right through. Crazy. Savage. Surprised her sister doesn't remember them, too. Because wasn't that in Budapest or was that in Moscow? What? Uh, the whole incident with him. Hmm. I think it was in Moscow. Because he was led by the um. Well, he was led by the Germans, so it wasn't. He would. There was no. The only way they would have known if he was fighting. 
you know, yeah, it was fighting against the Russians as well. But it was like we, you know, he was, you know, turned into a soldier, a super soldier himself, and then for Germany. And it's kind of crazy that there was a Russian super soldier. Then we ended up getting a, there was a, a German super soldier, which was turned into um, Bucky. And then we had the American super soldier. And then we have the black super soldier, which technically it will can be considered American. Basically. But yeah. Okay. So the, Brandon says, who is the picture he has hanged up? It looks like the weekend. Who's, who's in that picture? Oh, right no, here? I painted that years ago in my art class. It's supposed to be me. It didn't go too well. But I ended up dropping out of that class anyway because I didn't even finish it. Mr. Berber, what's up, Mr. Berber? How you doing, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. Where you been? Um, definitely Tyler's the mute guy. Um, not going to be you know, unmuted for a good year till he uh, hits puberty. And <laughs> uh, try. I think. Ty, what the hell's Ty again? Thank you, the TikTok singer. I remember him. I don't know. He wants to see the picture. I have to send it. Got all those goddamn boxes. I've been freaking stress free with no damn work, uh, school work because I'm done. I'm graduated, and I don't. See what you made him do, Brandon? Nice one. Nice one. From high school, Adam. From high school. Oh, he does look like... Why does he look like a really Puerto Rican guy, right? I mean, a Puerto Rican. Yeah, I know. But during that time... You had crazy I hair. Know, I, yeah, that, that I ID card. I, I won't forget about it. Yeah. My hair was ridiculous during that time. I wasn't even cutting it. I just didn't care. Then it man, got had, to a point that it was ridiculous. I had like that perm. You know. Looks like the guy on the left, of, but that that's that's him, guy. Fucking him. Just I just said that. You just fucking said that, guy. I can't fucking stand you, Adam. I can't fucking stand you. Um, dude. Okay, so what did you think of Taskmaster and who it was? Oh, he has. I like definitely... Taskmaster. I didn't really care about who it was. I felt like they really. He did all the he did all the moves and did all the things like what we were expecting for him to do. Like we saw him do the Black right. Panther claw thing. We saw him use the shield, the bow and arrow. We. You know, pose like when he was when she was fighting um Black Widow. She he freaking counter attacked her freaking like finisher move that she always does. She he she counter attacked that, and that was really cool. Now, I would like to see if since you know, like they should keep on going with the Taskmaster because if you think about it, it's really it's really just a suit and how the person is programmed. Because if it's if if you're capable of having to program somebody's head just the way the mother was programming the pig, then yeah, yeah, you could do another taskmaster. Like he could keep living on, you know. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, yeah. Like oh, she's she's no longer taskmaster anymore. But then who knows? A villain could come out of nowhere and be that character. Sorry, they're 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 betting on um who can make uh me laugh or chuckle. So they're saying a lot of stuff and I'm trying not to laugh. Hmm. I don't know why. Uh with Taskmaster, did you uh, I, I like the way that they changed it up though? Cuz I I, I did, actually I... enjoyed it and the reason why I did was because the whole movie uh Part of it was uh, about sex, sex trafficking, and you know, um, uh, fucking male patriarchy, and you know, just dominating these small little uh, communities and taking the women and deporting them, and then brainwashing them into their own, you know, puppets, uh, soldiers. So, 
to to really make a villain cynical and use their daughter and even to make believe that they're uh the uh, uh black widow black widow i forgot her name uh natasha romanoff to make her think oh i really killed the little girl and i didn't mean to but i had yeah. to or meant to but she didn't really want to but it was a sacrifice to do uh to save the the grander scheme of things um yeah. was really like smart and, and it, it kind of outplayed any other type of way you would want to connect tax taskmaster to natasha roman so i liked it i enjoyed it um he could have hired a mercenary it could have been meaningless kind of like that stroke because yeah. he, he you, you know you just you hire him to fight batman and then if he doesn't win and then you know he, he loses the money but i mean he gains the money but he loses the job like whatever it, yeah. it, there's less meaningful things, but that was very meaningful and impactful, and I really like that. Um, it so of, it was um, smart. This part where he you, he reveals that it was his daughter reminded me of the movie Disturbing Behavior. You ever seen Disturbing Behavior? It was about these. Uh, it was like this family ended up moving out because they're they're the. The son ended up committing suicide, so they felt like they're going out of town. So they went to another town, and they found out like there was a lot of preppies in the high school and things like that. You come to find out that they were being brainwashed to become good kids. So mm. they would get these adolescent kids who were like doing, you know, marijuana and hanging out, you know, late at night and drinking, and then they would get programmed to mm. become like modeled citizens in the school and good jocks and working being in varsity and they were programmed later on you come to find out that the principal themselves was programming them and their first and hip and his first child his daughter he ended up programming but she wouldn't be defective so they put her in like a, a sane asylum pretty interesting movie you ever get to watch it is is it's, it's one of those odd teenage uh, films and stuff, but it was like during the time, like of the faculty and um, varsity blues and stuff like that. So it was, it's, it's, you watch it. It's, it's a pretty interesting flick. It also talks about the whole brainwashing situation and, and, and all that stuff. And I kind of like that whole idea and they, that, you know, what they were doing to them. It was, it was pretty interesting. And it's sort of like, when that scene when Yelena wakes up, you kind of get the idea like she was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? Like she just woke up like if, as if there was a bad dream that she was doing and she finally woke up from it, realizing that she just killed one of her best friends at that moment when she realized when she killed her, which was pretty, pretty deep. <laughs> um, damn. Damn. Uh, so did you like the movie overall? Did you get any Easter eggs? Did you find any Easter eggs? Um, no, I didn't see a lot of Easter eggs. Um, I felt like most of them were just mentions of each of the members of the Avengers. Like you, Tony Stark was mentioned, Captain America, Barton, and just little bits and pieces of the characters. Nothing much. And that's... That's pretty much what I, I, I saw. I'm thinking, I'm like, why did Red Guardian... Because he didn't lie. Because Red Guardian kept saying... Because people said, nah, he lied to the prisoners. And I'm like, no, because then he asked Natasha and said, yeah. Hey, you, you see, see that actor that was portraying um, the big dude that he arm wrestled the last one when he threw it in his face? He ended up, I think, going on Twitter or Instagram, and he was, like, flexing. And then he says he they, there was an article saying that he is the first mutant that was mentioned in MCU. Come to find out that in the comics, he transforms into a bear because he is a mutant. And that's why he is known as the bear when um, this guy tells him, the Red Guardian says it. Oh, so he's the uh, he's he's kind of like um, their Hulk in a thing. Uh, I forgot what the, the Russian Avengers. I forgot what called. 
I call them Russian Avengers. I don't know if you ever seen the 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 uh, TV show, the animated show, but uh, after the assemble, Avengers assemble. Yeah. Yeah, they started doing a lot of things with like uh you know Thunderbolts and even um the Russian Avengers. So that's the bear. So I think that's him. So I think that would be him. If they were to do that thing with uh what they're doing now with uh Valentina. Yeah, which I see with that end credit scene and her popping up. Well, one, if you saw Falcon in the Winter Soldier, you know who she is. She's recruiting. For what reason, we don't know. But from the looks of it, if you think about it, right now, there's no Tony Stark and no Captain America. So it's like, right now, it's like Avengers is starting from scratch. Black Widow is dead. Um, Bruce Banner, well, whatever's happening with him. Um, right. Thor, well, he's still around. And Barton, he's well, he's going to have his own show. So it's like, there's really no Avengers. It's, it's sort of like they're, there's no leader. There's no one taking control of that anymore. It's right. like, it's it. So, I mean, what a better person to, to sort of start one than by her recruiting members and, you know, and starting her own Avengers. Yeah, I mean, thanks. that's what happened with um, Norman Osborn in, um, when they did the Dark Avengers. He became he became Iron Patriot, then um Doc and became the new Wolverine. Doc. What? Doc? You said Doc became the Dokken. new Wolverine. His son. Oh Dokken. no, Draken. Isn't it Draken? It's Dokken. Dokken? I don't think there's an R. I think it's Dokken. Like the band. Dokken. The Dark and Avengers. Now I'm confused. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, okay, wait. What? I have to. I, I, that didn't make any sense. Oh, his eyes. Jose, tell me how I was walking right. Then, right, and then I saw a penguin, and then I started to wobble, and then I was in Madagascar. What? Imagine Astro being the leader of the Avengers. That'd be hilarious. That'd be sad. They'd be like, no, no, stop. No. Uh, it's too much. Uh, Yo, so I thought I had to fart, right? But no, it was not a fart. Old Red, not a fart. Ew, this man sharded himself. Um, yeah, I couldn't find any Easter eggs. And that, that whole thing of him just like... Danny fought Captain America it just boggles my mind. I'm just like, okay, it's kind of like what they're kind of like what Doctor Who did when we all the older Queen Elizabeth was like, attack that man in that William Shakespeare episode. Yeah. Um, and then we've come to find out episodes and episodes, seasons later, why that happens. So, yeah, 50th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, all right, so we're probably going to get it later. It, it probably wouldn't even, it won't even answer it. Maybe in the what if, or maybe after Doctor Strange uh, fixes the timeline and everything and stuff. I you know. don't think Doctor Strange is going to fix jack shit. I think that, that the whole thing is going to freaking topple and it's going to create a lot of timelines. But I heard this. I was reading up on this. That means this cre this this timeline that was created. Okay, let's jump into Loki before we get into this. Oh yeah, yeah. The Loki man. Loki was amazing, and I don't know why people. Yo, Brandon. I don't know why you hate it. It's such a good sh episode. It was a great episode. The dialogue. They had enough fights for the whole season. The whole chaos was. It, it, what did you, you expect? Like the whole thing was. Okay, so what is Loki bringing us, and why is the timeline being created, and why is it being structured like a police station um, or, or a militia um, military? I'd say. Um, Here's the thing, though, and what they just created. We we've been hearing about the whole timeline thing when uh, the ancient one was showing us that things could split apart 
if you know if you take um the gems out of their proper timeline right but right now this has nothing to do with the gems right you know by killing him it costs a massive timeline shift and everything is starting to split there's no sacred timeline anymore anything could happen in yeah. other words if you think about it really really clearly everything from the very first Marvel movie that's ever been in theaters, not the Marvel Cinematic Movie movies, movies, till now can actually be canon. Yeah. Because of that timeline. From Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man to that, that awful, 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 probably Howard the Duck movie from the 1980s could be canon. Uh, you know, the it, Spider Man that really was cool in because Japan. now they could easily they could easily get any of the actors from the films and just say like this is this guy, you know he could come in. Hugh Jackman could just pop up now and they could hire him to be Wolverine because oh. it could easily just get fixed because of that timeline. There's no reason for them to actually be scared of rehiring people to play the roles they did in the other films. They yeah. could get James McAvoy back to play Professor X. They could get Fassbender to play Fassbender. Magneto. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest thing. Wait, uh, they could even bring back that Spider Man from the Japanese movie that was really bad, and then they uh made gave him a kind of like a Power Rangers type of a robot suit, robot thing. I'm talking about. Do you remember I'm that? Sorry, I that that fell out. I, that that was a branch that somehow split apart from the actual sacred, sacred timeline somewhere. I can't see that coming out of. It's like if Stanley doesn't make a cameo, it's not a canon. <laughs> Damn. It we didn't get any Stanley, right? No. No, yeah. they said they're gonna stop with that. Damn. They said they're at from this after Black Widow. That's pretty much it. Well, no, like, but I don't think anybody. But, I mean, we got a little bit of Loki in the painting uh, that they showed in the background in the TVA. They showed like a small picture of a uh, yeah, like a picture of Stan Lee, like painted in the background. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, in this in this uh, the area when um when Loki's uh, presented to 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 Renslayer in the first season and they show the background, they show a whole bunch of people. It, like, it's, it's like a painting and there's people in the background. One of them is Stan Lee. Ooh. So anyways, Kang tells us that he, well, not Kang, uh, the, what's it called? The, uh... the He Who Remains. He Who Remains. So in the comics, it, there are three different characters. Kang is a different character. He who remains is a different character, and so is the other guy that he plays. Uh, fucking what's his fucking? He Somebody... lets us know too. Right, but he says that all these different variations of him, you know, they came into contact with each other, and some of them, or half of them, decided to do good for their own multiverse, their own universe. And yeah. others wanted to conquer. Others wanted to, you know, um, create chaos and, and thought because they're so intelligent, so highly intelligent. And the technology technology that they use, it's so advanceful. They'd rather conquer or uh, take over or um, what's another word? Become a god, basically. Uh, yeah. Messiah to a lot of people. And so this one... You know, it makes sense for him to do that because, and why they did it was because, in a sense, he could try to control it as much as he can with the TVA. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people didn't like his performance or un uh, understood his performance, but it made sense because he was crazy. He said he stayed in that citadel. For a very long time, probably didn't leave. So his yeah, mindset is I, already crazy. I, I actually enjoyed his performance because oh, yeah. the thing, the end of the day, it oh, gave us a glimpse. He, 
Yeah, he, they also said he played the the timekeepers as well. In that scene, when you see the timekeepers, oh, he was really? actually the voices of the timekeepers. Oh, they actually they actually uh, had him there. The director said that um, they wanted to see more of his performance, so they said we want you to be the timekeepers as well. So they had him as the timekeepers. But, it and, but him acting like this doesn't mean that his next variant is going to be the same way. So it's like we're getting the same actor but acting playing diff like getting the same actor but playing different roles and giving us a different dynamic of the right. character different attitude towards it so i mean i actually enjoyed him i think he was really cool and he played it off really well the the you know he had that silliness or whatever but he when he was serious it was like you better listen because it's going to be some serious shit that's going to happen it's very um it was scary but also exciting because his range of acting in that whole little he had a whole monologue yeah he kept talking and talking and the way he talked to the different loki's the two loki's was crazy now talking about character development loki understood that he you know it's hard for him to even trust himself in a sense and even love himself in a sense. Um, Sylvie, on the other hand, understood that he, she can't trust anybody. Yeah. She couldn't even trust herself. But she, it was very hard because she was very... Uh, Loki was open-minded, while her Loki, because she never really uh, progressed in her character, um, character development, whatever, um, yeah. you know, she stayed within that zone even though she slowly thought she was coming out of that box you know what i mean so she was very close-minded yeah. while this loki was very open-minded especially knowing that you know he knew that in his in that timeline that he was supposed to go to he was going to thor was going to say i love you brother his mother yeah. was going to say i love you he was going to get accepted from odin and he was going to get um you know, in a sense, retaliation because yeah. Thor even loved him, even though he was adopted, even though, you know, they, he grew up with him because he was his brother. So yeah. he knew that and, and, and was like, well, damn, okay, so I got to make a change for myself. So I just loved that episode. And you get to, and you could tell the differences between those two Lokis. Yeah, it was good. Great. The thing is, it's also people are saying that the possibility of Loki actually appearing in, in Doctor Strange. But that's that's with knowing what he knows about the multiverse and knowing what happened and about the TVA and who the villain is. And, you know, it's it, it will be pretty crazy because now the thing is that now that I see that he's a variant. Now, if he appears, they're saying that he's going to appear in Ant-Man. Which one are we going to see? They're saying Khan the Conqueror. There's a possibility. But they also said that, you know, this is Khan too. But it's like, we might just get just a variant. Okay. We might not get the one that we all have to fear. Because I, said, in the, in the end, I was reading up on something on Khan and they said that there's some of the variants that literally are afraid of themselves because of how scary they are. So some of the cons actually are like in hiding from themselves because some of them are very, very da like dangerous to be around in. So I think con is like the ultimate monster. So everyone, even the other cons are afraid of him. He's like the variant where, where you're like, holy crap, this is one dude that we can't be near us. Yeah, like Rick and Morty, you remember? Like all the Mortys are kind of similar, except for that one Morty that killed everybody. I mean, even in the comic books, that um, Richard Reed Richards did the same thing. We got to see different variants of him with the Infinity Gauntlet. We got to see him as you know, as a, as a scientist. We got to see him like there was different variants. There's different. There's variants. a whole bunch of variants. Yeah, he had the, the Council of Richards or the Council of uh, something. Yeah. And even Kang has that in in the comics. He has a Kang, uh, what the fuck is it called? 
Council of Kang, something like that. I don't remember. But he, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Because he even said, uh, the one, uh, he who remains, he said, um, there's a whole bunch of us and we all, like, uh, like, had a multiversal war. But before that, they all talked about it, it kind of like a Congress kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I can't wait to see that. Can't wait to see how it plays out. I don't think he's in, um, that Kang that we're going to see in Ant-Man and the Wasp is a, is that, I think it's the city that we see him in the, was it Infinity War or Ant-Man? Remember there was a little, little city that we saw while he was in, in the I um, think, Quantum no, Zone? I think it was in Ant-Man and the Wasp. That right. we get to see that city. So I think that Kang realized that the the quantum realm, he could create something from it. So he created a city. So I think that's the, the Kang that we're going to see. Hmm. I think so. Well, at least we get to see a variant. I do like this guy as an actor. He's, he's very and, good. And I said it in a, in a TikTok video. By the way, I have news for that. But I said it in a TikTok video where... We saw little tidbits of the Mad Titan, which was, which is Thanos. But we're gonna see yeah. a long thing with 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 Jonathan Majors, uh, of the Mad Conqueror. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get a lot of variations. It's not just gonna be one big part in the uh, two parter movie. It's gonna be yeah, maybe different movies and different you know shows. Loki doesn't come out until 2023, season two. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about with that. I mean, not a lot to talk about, but to, to, to see which Kang that is, because I don't think that's Kang the Conqueror. I think that's Kang still, in a sense, still trying to fix the timeline as yeah. much as he can. And who even knows? Because he was pushed out of that timeline that he was in when Sylvie was, oh, God. Um, the Tempad. So who knows if he's even in his own timeline? What if he's in another timeline? What movie is he in? I wonder. Uh, well, Sylvie might be stuck there. I doubt she's stuck. I think he'll end up trying to save her and going through. But I no, don't she has the Tempad. Is capable of going in. Yeah, she has it. She could actually escape that. But right now, I think you saw it in her face. She knew she screwed up. Oh yeah, most definitely. When she killed when she killed him, he was like, see you soon. And he was smiling. There was no there was no like it it wasn't like she felt like a breath of fresh air. Finally she got her revenge. No. She just it it was more like, Oh man, I think I screwed up somewhere. Like she messed up. And I, and I don't think the revenge even like she how do you say? It didn't feel like, he, you know, like he created the TVA. I think this is this con version of variant is created the TVA. And I'm guessing the next variant is just whatever, whatever's coming out. But I, I was looking up on him. He had a lot of variants and. Uh, and some of them became heroes and. Um, in the Marvel Universe, in the Marvel comics. Yes, so. It's going to be fun to see, and it's going to be interesting to, like, finally see where they can go with this, especially since Wanda's still looking out for her kids, so does that mean that she also found out that, about the timelines? Um, where is Doctor Strange in all this? Because the Supreme should be able to fix this? Um, especially with that new action figure that we saw for the next spider-man movie where we see either uh spider-man in a black suit that has the sorcerer supreme types of things in his yeah. arms that's cool so that's most likely a very uh not a very another timeline but anyway i mean i i they're very quiet on everything they're doing by the way for dr strange they are 
No, well, so far they said that it's probably one of the scariest freaking Marvel movies that they have ever made. I mean, you have Sam Raimi doing this. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, Sam Raimi has been doing horror movies since the 19 freaking 70s, 80s, 1980s. Yeah, so there's so much to see and so much to, like, learn and wait for and can't get excited. Or can't get more excited than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we're going to get what uh, America Chavez is going to appear there for the first time. Wanda is going to be there. Um, Loki. Baron Iron Mordo Man. is going to be there. Who? Is it Baron Mordo? Yeah, the main vi- uh, the villain from the first one. At the end, you kind of tell he's he's the main, he's going to be the bad guy. Oh, he yeah. He's Baron yeah. Mordo. Mordo. Mm-hmm. Which is played by... Um, what is his name? Magnificent and only his name. Well, Baron Immorto. Yeah. Um what uh what can you what can you I can't say his name. That's hard. Shoot hello. Is your four? I mean, we've got we've in the Marvel comics, we've gotten characters that came out of nowhere. We've had, you know, Hydra Steve Rogers, and he was beaten up by the original Captain America from back in the day of Chiwetel Ejiofor. There were so many alterations of the Marvel comic the comic book characters that it's like you can do whatever you please now. They could easily just come out with out of nowhere with a new Tony Stark. They could easily come out of nowhere with a new Steve Rogers. They could, you know, it's like, and they don't have to explain anything. You know, it will be explained through the entire series as it goes. So it's like, we're going to see new things. And this is a good thing because I, I kind of want to see what, you know, now they could just pull anything out of the hat and it will, you know, be pretty surprising. His name is Chewy Tell Edua Four. Chewy Tell. I mean, and and Kevin Feige said we can't rule it out that Spider Man will end up in you know finally they'll do a Spider Man and Venom. So he's like, don't rule it out. And we're still waiting on Mobius or Morbius. Yeah, it's Morbius. being it's being pushed back, and I don't know why. Um. Maybe it's, I guess it's because of what's going on right now, not the pandemic, just like in general, the story to have Michael Keaton's character pop up in Morbius and that sort of needs to kind of get explained a bit. You know, we understand they're part of the Spider-Man universe, but you're also created Morbius in Venom's universe and there's no connection whatsoever with Venom and Spider-Man. Right. And you're including Michael Keaton's character who ended up with Spider-Man at some point. So it's like Sony kind of, I can't do a curve where it doesn't make any sense at the moment. So I see that if they do what they're doing with the timeline now, then that could be explained. And also they already found a director for Blade. So Let's see, because if they find a director to Blade and they keep pushing Mobius back, what are the possibilities of that being connected with Mobius now? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, I believe that's where we're going to end the Marvel talk, and we're going to go into DC. But right before we hit DC, um, I want to bring up what we got now. Now you're gonna hate this. But this is really small. It's not a simple just shirt. It's like silky. Oh, yeah. I got bamboozled. So this is more like a gym shirt. I mean, this is yours. Uh, But I'm going to give you the black one, too. Is this mm. too damn small on me? See, I'm a big man. When it comes to big man thing, I need, I need comfort. I can't be tight. Tight. So... I don't know. Maybe you could get your son to wear the medium one. 
I don't think it'll fit on any. In, in, in. What size are they? They say they medium, but they look freaking small. This says large, and it's like freaking small. Hmm. I'm saying this is small, but maybe I gotta wash it because it's also stretchy, so it's not bad. Bad. It probably shrinks, but you should wash it to see. Well, wash one of them and see like how the how the design if it stays on there or not. Well, you probably will, but that's well. I'm gonna give it to you Thursday because I'm I'm uh, in laundry. Okay. So you could check I'll that. Pop up on Thursday. But here's the thing that pissed me off. So I used the the company. It's called Redbubble, and apparently somebody um said that we're copying their shit. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. I have rights to this. The, my partner actually did the drawing, and this is from part of the drawing. Yeah. So I haven't heard from them back, so I'm pretty sure I'm back to selling it. But I have to buy one for myself, and I have to get a t-shirt. Yeah, I have the gym. And I'm going to sweat balls in it. Oh. I want to promote it and if wear anything, it. I'll, I'll, I want to try to see if I, I want to do, uh, yeah, I want to do an original. I want to do an original. I've been thinking about doing uh, uh, like how they used to do those weird old school MTV like like weird slime face things that were always weird to me. Oh, it was always cool. Okay, well you can do or an amalgam of uh, Marvel and DC and stuff like that. Wow, my whole chat room. Got... What? What happened? There you go. Um, so yeah, anyway, so let's move on. So Superman and Lois, man. I'm not gonna drop the link by the way to the merch yet. If you're watching it, you can't watch it, you can hear it. Um, yes, it's it's uh it's a tribute to the one and only course Back to the Future title and movie. So But I'm not gonna drop the link because uh again, Redbubble said that we are copywriting somebody some other artist and i was trying to search up for the like the artist stuff and i mean it's just says geek and fast and something and the other one was like okay like it doesn't say mythos it has to say mythos if it doesn't say mythos then it's not really like it's not copying. it's technically it's not really copying because it's 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 a parody it's the letters from back to the future Right. And it's like you can't copyright something that's been done in the 80s and everybody has been doing using that same bubble design to create other stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know what's wrong with that. Like, so dumb. Um, but we'll see. Anyways, going on to Superman and Lois. This, ep I think, yeah, this episode, after the hiatus that they went through, um, it's not really, you know. I don't know. I mean, it was okay how it ended. Yeah, to be it wasn't honest, really spectacular compared no. to the other series of episodes that we have seen. I enjoyed it, and but I'm going to be honest. It with wasn't. You. It wasn't as 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 great as it should have been. I, I think what they should have done um, is sort of help the situation out. You're talking about this is this is the weird thing. The town is all doing fine and everybody's relaxing for some reason and chill. But people are getting pissed off as like the people that ended up turning evil and ended up like causing panic around the town. And then everybody's fine and everybody's pissed off at each other in the town. But if it, if it was, if I knew that Superman was going evil out there i'm pretty sure i will lock my doors to my house and be like i don't this is crazy what's going on you know this will be all over the world you're talking about superman freaking but it's like how did they hide that so well you know like it's like because it's in a small town i'm guessing but it's 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 kind of weird because they had a whole bunch of Superman people with Superman's abilities, almost killing people out there or, you know, and then Superman right now, plus Morgan Edge, you're finding out Morgan Edge has abilities in all this stuff. But no, it's not even becoming the talk of the town. No one's really 
speaking about it and everybody's trying to live their life and this, this and that. So it's like, you know, I don't know it, about that. They kind of, I think it was kind of a letdown. First off, I have to be honest with you. I do not care. And I'm sorry to say that, but I don't care about the Luna family situation. Yeah. What with that? Um, Lana's land, Lana's family. I just, yeah, yeah. I think they should have sort of dragged that out a little bit into the series. I don't think they sh- they should have. Um, it felt like it's adding this on didn't, didn't help I, at all. I feel like it felt out of place out of this episode. Uh-huh. Like this is an episode where Superman is turning evil, and he created he did a lot of bad shit in in. In John's freaking uh, uh, his world, and then he might start it here. Um, I think it should be like, you know, alert. Superman's evil. Let's everybody start like panicking. You know, that's like Godzilla level panic. You know, Superman just freaking annihilated and destroyed an entire city in his world, and John is telling everybody is like, yeah, he destroyed everything. Why is everybody walking around like nothing's happening? You know, it's only in this bunker where the soldiers are. And shit. You know what could have been cool if something happened in Smallville and they have a whole big talk and there's people out there that like know about like Mar- like we see characters that always uh, said hi to Clark or in the events. So it's yeah. fine to have them in that city thing. And then we have Morgan Edge and Superman just like talking or yelling at each other. Like, yes, he's my brother. And I'm going to turn, you know, something kind of weird about that. But like, it could have been cooler because it just didn't make it like I nobody cared about Superman and, and the thing. And like, it just it kind of like flew out of proportion and everything was all right after that. In a sense, yeah. it's uh, people's jobs were taken and everything. Still, like everybody was still breathing. Everything, nobody was running in chaos and anything like that. So this the, the the situation wasn't really dire, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Did we you had John that that his S was much more dirtier, like it was really dark. Superman's S. That and also because it, it just it also looked like when he was like clean, you could tell it was yeah. just like that, you know? Yeah. Plushy. Yeah. So it's like it's mad dark. Did it remind you of Christopher Reeves when he ended up turning evil and he had that dark S like super suit? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. That would also that was also cool. I was like, ah, you guys picked up on little things like that. Good job on that one. Yeah, I I I kind of I honestly I want to see John actually make the Superman suit. I actually want to see that. I want to see him wear the armor with the S on it. I want to see him pull that off. I kind of oh, like really whole... good direction for him to, to 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 do that. You know what I mean? The turn yeah. to turn because it was all about kill Superman, but then it was just yeah. like turning. So I did like that family aspect of that. You know, yeah. Jonathan talking to him, Lois talking to him, and actually telling him who he was, which I was like, <sighs> does that make sense? Sure. What? No, no, no. I was, I was talking to myself. I'm like, mm. does it make sense for Lois to tell him? Sure. It was, yes. it was good that she ended up telling him. Yeah. Like, it- because it, it was like this, you know, she knew that he was talking to a man that was in love with her in, in an alternate universe that they were together. Right. So, to sort of break that exterior and break that barrier that he has to go up against Superman, you have to touch the heart, you know, he had, she had to touch the heart of the matter in order for him to sort of like say, yeah, you know, I think there was, there was hesitation though, when he went to go kill Superman, it wasn't like straightforward shooting with a missile, you know? And, and he was, there was hesitation. Like he, right. He felt like he was in and out of the situation. Like, should I kill him? Should I stop him? This, this, and that, you know? And then when she started, he started hearing Lois's voice. That's when, you know, he started to like, yeah, he's snapping out of it. You know, it's like, and he did. He snapped out of it himself. Yeah. It was all, man. 
and it, it was crazy. I, I was like, who's the who's supposed to be the guy? I was like, oh yeah, I forgot General Zod. Consciousness. Which we might see him later on. Who knows? Hmm. Um, did you like the design that he had? The the family crest of Morgan Edge? The side S? Yeah, it kind of looked really... It looked cool. It looked like they wanted to play around with it. But it didn't look like a Kryptonian I, I type liked, of thing. I, I like the fact that it was... It was Smallville who first created the Kryptonian language. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they went on and sort of used it in... um. They ended up using it in... um. During the Batman Superman series, Public Enemies. Remember that uh, comic book? The one they turned into a cartoon? Yeah, cartoon movie. They ended up using, if you read the comic book, the dialogue between Supergirl and Superman is the Kryptonian language from Smallville. And But I feel like, why did it, Why can't you use that? You know? Like, it's, it's in, in Crisis of Infinite Earths. They exist. That Kryptonian language could not have it changed. You know, it, it should be, like, their ultimate language. Right. That that should have been, like, the crest should be sort of looking like that symbol. Yeah, it didn't look like it. It looked kind of weird. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Um, and also, it also played on the idea of, uh, damn it. Jesus, what was the, the, the reign of Superman? Oh, the Eradicator. They played on the Eradicator. It yeah. was a device that they used. It wasn't the actual Superman. Which was kind of a play because it also was like, he could have been an Eradicator in a sense. But not Zod. So. But it was mm -hmm. interesting how they played with that. Maybe we'll see another reign of Superman. It's funny because it was like three Supermen, I guess. Eradicator, the Man of Steel, and the Man of Eradicator of the Man of Steel. And then if you think about it, this guy's super this kid is Superboy. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh. I said kinda. I didn't say Yeah, you know, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, leather right, jacket right. Superboy. Yeah. Eh, I mean, can I see him with a leather jacket? He needs to get bulky. Nah. Get Probably the other brother. But yeah, I don't know about yeah. this one. He he needs to get bulky, cut his hair, and then change him up a bit. Probably you could probably rock it. Change him up a bit. It's like they're giving us a sort of emo version of of a Superman, you know. Well, it like, kind of makes sense because he's in his Super teenage Boy, because, years. I mean, Connor in in um in Young Justice, he was pretty emo. He was, you know, he was always serious. He was always, you know, he didn't really laugh that much. He was, you know, he was always angry. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of get it. But he's also very sensitive, too. Yeah, he's way too sensitive. I think it's, he should sort of get out of that. It, like, I, it, it, I felt like there was so many episodes of feeling like everyone was out to get him. Like, you're trying to steal my girlfriend. You're trying to do this to me. You're trying to do that. You know, and I felt like it's like you need to chill out, you know, like it's but then I, I wonder if that's just having the abilities and sort of like the purity, the puberty affecting the puberty and having these abilities like manifest sort of causing him to sort of feel that way, you know, like it's it's it, that's how it how it ends up. As if in Brightburn, the whole his whole puberty ended up just he ended up just letting it overtake him. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's it's a very good, interesting way of how they're doing. Um, but yeah, this episode kind of felt lackluster. I mean, it's so far out of the what twelve? This is the twelve out of the twelve. That's supposed to be fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Every other. I think episode it was fine. I, I think overall the series so far has been fine. There were um. There's yeah. been a lot of strong episodes. Um. 
they they kind of, they changed the lore to the 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 Kryptonian uh, the Kryptonian lore, which is pretty cool. Um, they've done a lot of new things. I can't wait to see. They found the, a the, new way to Superman. ground Superman in a sense. Yeah, um, I can't wait to to see what they're what they can do. You know? I really, 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 really hope they find a way to bring in Batman instead of having the Green Arrow type of thing. Oh, well, he's done. But, you know, you got to get Batman a, a show. I don't know why they don't do that. I they forgot why they don't. Do it. Yeah, and it's it's like... Like, you can do I it. Guess that's like they're, it's like Warner Brothers, DC's Warner Brothers' prize possession. Like, we, if it's a, if we're going to bring Batman, we're going to have to do it this way. And then we don't get, like, the full version of him. We're either going to get Bruce Wayne, a young Bruce Wayne, some dude that just comes out of the shadows, some dude that used to be Batman, but is no longer Batman because his back was broken by Superman or Bane or someone. It's like we never get batman you know we never get the origin of batman in a sense of he's just starting out if you think batman about begins, it batman adam begins. west was probably the only person on television to only be batman hmm. everybody else after that was like in the movies uh or it was bruce somebody played bruce wayne uh we never got like someone in the costume doing you know all sorts of things Speaking of Batman, they're going to do, is it a four or six issue series? Six issue series called Batman 89, which is going to be taking place after the events of Batman Returns. So it's going to be, they're going to keep on going with Michael Keaton's story. In other words, Robin is going to be black. Okay. Because gener- um, because um, originally it was going to be Marlon Wayans that was going to play Robin. Really? But oh, Tim Burton didn't. Yes. So Tim that. Burton didn't pick him. Uh, not that in, no, Tim Burton picked him, but he didn't, they didn't keep going with the, with, with the, the, his Batman series. I don't know why, but it's gotta be something behind that. Why he, they, he didn't, they didn't keep up with his story. And then of course we have, um, this guy uh, who played uh, uh, Billy D. Williams, who played Harvey Dent. So we'll probably be expecting Billy D. Williams to come out as Two Face. Well, um, don't forget, I think they're doing that also because they're going to tie, may, might, might tie that in for the Flash movie. Probably. I think they just, they're, I think because would not tie it in, but also feel like we could get money out of this, yeah. <laughs> you know, because. Michael Keaton's coming back as Batman, you know, and people will probably want to see like what happened in between or, or something like that. You know, they already have, um, did you see the new trailer to, uh, Titans? I just know that it's coming now and I can't wait. I think it's in August no? Yeah. They show, um, they show him, they show uh, uh, Jason Todd, he's walking in a carnival and then he starts, uh, he sees somebody like hanging and he has a, the smile. He's get, he gets beat up by the lead pipe, by the crowbar. And then in the news, if you hear that um, Robin was murdered and killed, blah, blah, blah. And then they show uh, uh, Tim Drake and he's looking at the news and you can see like each member because um on the i think uh starfire's sister is going to be there um they showed barbara in her wheelchair but she's she's uh she's commission she's commissioner now she's not like oracle she's working for the, the police department oh interesting different take on that also young justice has a new um it's coming back yeah october was it September? Yeah, it's definitely coming back. Definitely coming back, and it was something else. I forgot. I think. Oh, Suicide Squad is going to come out. I just don't remember when. And John August. Cena's show is going to come out, too. August, right too. August, right? Yeah. 
So, yeah. Have you seen Space Jam? No. Oh, you haven't seen Space Jam? Okay. I haven't seen Space Jam either. I kind of want to see it tomorrow. I don't know. It's my not girl's not very fun. No, I know. And I heard it wasn't as great as Michael Jordan's one. But, um... Mm. Because yeah, they're saying that most of the stuff was overshadowed, like it overshadowed like the Looney Tune characters, like everything else overshadowed it. Well, yeah, I heard a lot of Easter eggs was in it. Justice League was in it, so a lot, of, you know, DC. Yeah, characters were in it. Um, Warner Brothers threw everything in the kitchen sink that they have in their in their freaking arsenal. Yeah, but they don't want to do anything properly proper with any other another franchises. Which- so stupid. This is me off. I, I, a lot of people are hating to, uh, Warner Brothers because of how they're handling a lot of the DC characters in the DC um, universe. Yeah, no. It's like, we need to make a better movie than this, you know, and then they're like... They just postpone it. They don't do it. They develop in hell. They, shit goes in development hell. Right now, they're uh, looking for a... Uh, a director to pin Zatanna, and they're also looking for a Batgirl. Oh yeah, I saw that news news today. Yeah, I think there's three, but I don't remember who. It's actually it's four of them. Four. Uh, I think it was Cassidy, Cassandra, yeah. or something. Let's see what they're gonna they're gonna do. Would if, that be if... oh? If they one thing is if before you finish, if they end up picking picking a uh, a black uh, a black Barbara, then it could probably see if I would wonder I wonder if they would actually connect it with Robert Patterson's um Batman. Oh yeah, that can be that would be cool. But Warner Brothers don't think that far. They don't want. I I, I don't know if they want to even do a shared universe anymore. It doesn't even seem like it. No. But we'll see what happens in the Flash and the timeline and all that. I don't know. I don't know. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, ten, uh, this was a great episode. Good episode. We talked about a lot. And where the MCU is going to um, going to go forth and where DC is lacking. <laughs> Funny. Um so on so forth loki was amazing black widow was a great movie to watch it felt very spyish you know that's what i liked about it. very spy and it had the action of like it was a lot of action in some moments where it was quiet but it needed to be yeah because you kind of get tired of the action too much action is just, you just get tired of it but it was slow uh in in very small moments it had it had a good pace. It didn't feel like oh god this you know yeah. it, it it had a good pace. We got some background story. We got what was happening in between Civil War and Endgame that during that time what was going on, and we we got to see a lot of it. So it was it was it was the film was overall really good. It didn't you know to say that it was the best Marvel film. Of all time, period. I don't think so. However, I could say that I could actually sit down and watch Black Widow and not watch Dark World or Iron Man 3. True, true. I can't. Those are just two Marvel movies I can't sit down and watch. And occasionally, occasionally, I if, if Civil War is on, I probably wouldn't watch it either. There was there was a lot of issues with me in Civil War. I don't know. I can't sit down and watch it. Like I don't. I think if I were to put all three Captain America movies, it would be it would be uh, Winter Soldier, the first Captain America, and then Civil War will be right at number three. Because I, regardless of all the characters, it just I felt like a lot of stuff was out of place. No, I agree. Like they could have done better. Indeed. But we also got the child and we also got Spider Man. No, and that was that was cool. I think people really wanted to see that these characters were there. 
And even Spider-Man was there for a brief moment because everyone was like, oh, we're going to get a movie soon. So it doesn't matter. We don't have to see him at his full glory doing all these things. So it's like the end of the day, we, we got it to see like he had his five minutes of fame there. And then everybody was like, oh, I like this kid. Let's go. I can't wait for Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, with that being said now, again, once again, you can find us on Spotify, Twitch, iTunes, Amazon Music, um, YouTube, TikTok, Discord, which is down below. All those links are down below. Except for the podcast ones that you could find in the link tree. And I have all those links there for you. Um, again, I'm not doing the merch yet because it got copyrighted, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know why somebody, <clears throat> whoa, my voice broke. Why somebody would do that uh, to us, especially since. Well, they, they can't because it's already, if they try to do it, they'll find out that they, it's been copywritten. So they can't sue us, especially. They can't because it, it'll, it would have to be like, they're like, no, nah, they can't. At the end of the day, it's like, you know, the only thing if it's already been copywritten and if they can't and if they decide to take it, it's going to be like error. You can't take it because it's already been taken, you know, right? Doesn't make so whatever they can't. They can't do it. They can't do it. Um, but I shall see you guys next week. You know what? Do, are, do you want to do it Monday's nights? Is that a Friday yeah. or Mondays? Okay, Mondays. I feel it is. a little bit more so, comfortable on Mondays. Okay, so yeah, Mondays I, I don't it feel is. Feel like I'm run, on a rush on Fridays. Well, Mondays it is. Mondays we will start doing a podcast with his work schedule, and with my work schedule, I'm off Mondays, so that's fine for now. Sorry for the switch, but it is how it is. So I'll see you back next week on Monday. Um, and I think we might have the special guest star. I don't know yet, so we'll see. We have talks talks about that. so um talk about it but next week might be a 90s episode 90s music it's been a while since we've done that too we did the 80s music separately um yeah anyways i'll see you then guys and uh of course have a good one geek gods peace bye